We must recreate the European family in a regional structure. Israel and the European Economic Community established diplomatic relations as early as 1959. However, the relationship is a complex one. The Rebel Down Media recently sat down with the Ambassador of the European Union to Israel to discuss the EU's ongoing activities in the Holy Land. We have a very strong, very vibrant and very multifaceted relationship uh, between the EU and Israel. Maybe on arguably the, the strongest relationship that the EU has with any third country uh, in the world. We are optimists uh, by profession in the European Union and um, uh, we think that uh, there are uh, certain reasons uh, for optimism. We would very much like to see the two parties engage in direct negotiations. We think that both parties have a clear interest in trying to solve this uh, conflict. We don't expect um, any one of the parties, and, and uh, not Israel, not the Palestinians, to solve the conflict uh, on their own. According to Israeli officials, the European Union is acting illegally by funding unauthorized Palestinian buildings in areas placed under Israeli control by international law. Hundreds of Palestinian homes have been built in Area C of the West Bank, which was placed under Israeli jurisdiction during the Oslo Accords. The European Union is a signatory to the 1993 Oslo Accords, which jump-started the peace process. The Accords and the binding international law dictates that all building in Area C must have permission from Israel, whether it's temporary or permanent. Yet the European Union has decided to break away from its own signed agreements. Professor Eugen Kontorovich, an international lawyer, told the British-based Daily Mail that there is no question, the European Union is openly in violation of international law. Alan Baker, who helped in drafting the Oslo Accords, added that the same principles apply anywhere in the world. If you want to build, you need planning permission. Well, there's something um, accepted internationally uh, called the humanitarian uh, imperative. And uh, what we have been uh, helping the Palestinians in particularly Area C in the uh, Palestinian territories to do is simply uh, to uh, provide them uh, with basic uh, livelihood, including uh, tents, uh, and other uh, humanitarian uh, supplies. I think that this kind of uh, activities is uh, against the international law. Ben Dror Yamini is one of Israel's leading investigative journalists. His work is published in Israel and internationally. He has written extensively about the European Union, BDS and the Middle East conflict. I think uh, that Israel should uh, uh, tell the uh, EU enough. You are crossing the red lines, and they are crossing the red lines. They are crossing the red lines by funding those NGOs. Uh, they are uh, crossing the red lines by, uh, by signing this kind of uh, uh, property with uh, their own uh, stickers. I think uh, there is a problem here, and what we uh, urge the Israeli authorities to do is to agree to the establishment uh, of so-called master plans uh, for areas in which the Palestinians uh, are able to, uh, to build and to live. And there I have to say that the um, expansion of settlements uh, on the Israeli side uh, is, in our opinion, uh, a um, factor uh, which is not conducive uh, to uh, the peace process because they are creating facts uh, on, on the ground. When the EU is criticizing Israel about the settlements, it's fair enough. It's a legitimate criticism. It's under a big debate here in Israel, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's fair enough to criticize Israel about it. But they are crossing the red lines. And um, they should be told, it should be said, it should be put on the table in order, in order to put uh, a red line between the legitimate criticism and this kind of activities that are not acceptable uh, in the relationship between, uh, uh, between states. I would like to say this uh, very uh, clearly. We are against uh, BDS in the European Union as we are against any kind of international isolation of this world. 
we want uh, dialogue and we want cooperation with this world. We think that is the way forward even in areas uh, in which uh, we uh, disagree. The EU uh, officially they support the two states for two people solution, officially. Practically what they are doing is that they fund many NGOs that support the BDS. And when they are challenged, come on, but you are supporting the two states for two people solution, how comes that you support so many NGOs that uh, are against the very existence of Israel, that are against peace, they tell you, well, what we support, it's only human rights project. The EU does not support any organizations uh, here in, uh, in Israel that are involved in BDS. Also, politically, um, most of the supporters of the BDS movement are proponents of a one-state solution which is totally contrary to the view of the uh, European Union, which, as you know, uh, is in favor of a two-state uh, solution. So not only do we disagree with the means, we also disagree with the uh, objectives or, or the goals of the BDS movement. Founded in 1988, the Nazareth-based the Arab Association for Human Rights, also known as HRA, is one of the oldest and most established non-governmental organizations in the Arab sector in Israel. The European Union, as well as other organizations, regularly fund HRA. The most recent grant to HRA from the European Union was given for the Shabab project, to the tune of nearly 200,000 euros. We don't support organizations we support projects that are implemented by organizations. As the ambassador stated, the European Union does not fund organizations that support BDS. However, on July 9th of 2005, the BDS network out of Norway published a document calling on individuals and organizations to boycott Israel. One of the organizations that endorsed this was the Arab Association for Human Rights out of Nazareth the same one that received hundreds of thousands of euros from the European Union. If you think that this is an isolated incident, think again. Our research has found many other organizations who have either received funding in the past or are currently receiving funding from the European Union while actively supporting BDS and delegitimizing the State of Israel. Adala is one such organization. Its democratic constitution calls for replacing the Jewish foundation of the state, or in other words, having the state of Israel cease to exist. From 2012 till 2014, the European Union has given Adala nearly 2 million shekels. Does this mean that Adala endorses BDS? Well, you be the judge. Fédération Internationale de Dorte de l'Homme, also known as FIDH, is a Paris-based federation of 141 NGOs from 92 countries, with consultative status in several international bodies. Internationally, FIDH only promotes boycotts against Israel, no other nation. Some of its Israeli partners include Adala and an NGO called B'Tselem, another human rights organization that is partially funded by the EU. In the first half of 2015, B'Tselem received over a million shekels from the European Union. Dala and B'Tselem are supportive of FIDH, who exclusively focuses on boycotting and delegitimizing the State of Israel. Many other examples exist, we just don't have enough time to show all of them. Yet, the European Union continues to fund these organizations, claiming that they don't fund BDS, they only fund the projects. But here is a contradiction, because what they are doing actually is they are funding all the infrastructure that if one day the Palestinians will accept the two-state for two-people solution, this infrastructure that is funded by Europe will be against the peace agreement. This is a tragedy. Actually, what they are doing is so counterproductive to peace because what they are doing, for example, the main demand of the BDS is the right of return. The EU is not supporting the right of return. And when they support NGOs that support the right of return, actually they perpetuate the problem. They do not solve the problem. Because maybe 10 years ago we could achieve a solution based on two states for two peoples. Not anymore. It's something that is, uh, uh, that is uh, promoted by the NGOs that are funded by the EU. It's a tragedy. I do hope that more and more 
uh, uh, EU uh, politicians and government will understand the trap. Israel's government is now considering a variety of laws to stop foreign funding to various NGOs. The government stated that the funding of these NGOs is eroding the legitimacy of Israel to exist as a Jewish and democratic state. Israel and she should be very proud of the vibrant uh, and very active civil society you have uh, in this country, which um, I think is an essential component uh, of a, um, a flourishing uh, democracy. And uh, that uh, we were concerned to hear that uh, there are uh, certain uh, initiatives at foot uh, to try to um, uh, constrain uh, the activities of these uh, organizations and close down space for civil society. If it is not accepted that France, for example, will fund an NGO like Breaking the Silence in England, how come that uh, uh, another European country will fund the breaking the silence in Israel. If it is not accepted that uh, Britain will fund uh, an NGO that is supporting the right of return of ethnic German refugees to Poland or to uh, ask for their uh, for, uh, restitution, if they don't do it, because it is unacceptable, unconceivable in the relation between the two states, how comes that they do it when they come to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Whatever they don't allow in Europe, let's not allow it in Israel. Just let's adopt the European rules, the European norms. That's what I'm recommending. I hope this government will do it. Many times they are asked, and I ask them, how come that you really focus on uh, Israel? How come that you uh, don't speak about uh, so many other conflicts? And, and uh, their answer is, look, look, Israel is a democracy, uh, and you have to be proud that we uh, criticize you. We consider Israel as part of the Western world, and as such, uh, they are cherishing, the, uh, the Israelis are cherishing the same values uh, as we do in Europe, United States, and other places. Respect for human rights, the rule of law, free market principles, and so on and so forth. Now, I mean, if you do that, then obviously you are also ready to be held accountable towards those standards uh, in your actual practice. Then uh, my answer to them is uh, no thanks. I mean, first of all, um, I don't think that there should be any kind of distinction between states. Well, because uh, one state is a democracy, it should be criticized much more. What does it mean that Israel should not be a democracy and then you will leave us alone? That's the meaning of what you are saying. It's so stupid. That's one. The second thing is uh, that, um, that it doesn't allow you. It doesn't really allow you uh, to uh, cross the red lines. And you do it by funding so many NGOs that are against the very existence of Israel. You are crossing red lines. You are funding NGOs that are against the very existence of Israel. You have to apologize, not me. You cannot even excuse it. You have just to stop it because it is totally unacceptable. Uh, I think that, that uh, we have a lot of activities in order um, to show the Europeans, European parliaments, the EU parliament, to show the real work of those um, NGOs, what they are doing, how much they are lying, how much it is counterproductive to peace. And, and when you show it, you find more and more politicians in uh, uh, Europe, in uh, the EU that are beginning to ask questions, why do we found, fund this kind of NGOs? And I hope it will keep on. I hope so. For the Rebel Dab Media, I'm Miguel Hecht.